Hey guys, K Dog Crazy here with K Dog Indoors Episode 2. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at several lightweight, compact options for backpacking stoves and the fuel they use. I've got a couple backpacking stoves set up behind me, so let's check them out. So all the major stoves and fuel sources that we would normally bring out on a backpacking trip should be represented here. Uh, of course, there's millions of different ones on the market with really complicated and expensive pieces to maintain and to purchase. So there's just a small arrangement here of maybe the more affordable range uh, for the common backpacker. Uh, starting with, of course, the uh, solid fuel cubes or tabs to the uh, alcohol stoves, uh, Sterno, not really my favorite, and then uh, canister stoves. So we'll start over here with the, uh, this is Esbit, uh, we'll start with these and go over the uh, pros and cons and work our way down. So the solid fuel tablets. Um, these guys typically burn about 7 to 11 minutes. Uh, they take twice as long as an alcohol stove to boil two cups of water, which is what I typically do for a meal. You do get a better flame off of these things if you set them upright like this uh, instead, of, instead of flat like the manufacturer uh, has it designed. And a better uh, boil time for that two cups of water if you use two at the same time. Now several companies make these solid fuel tabs like Esbit, uh, Coglins, and you can pick up some hexamine tablets from uh, army surplus stores. There's also a ton of stoves on the market that are made either exclusively for these tablets, uh, like this Esbit uh, cook set with pot stand right here. Um, there is a plate inside here that will take a, a small um, tablet. Um, I board that out so that I can put in a small alcohol stove as well. And then there's um, other Esbit stoves and other companies that make these, like Transgen makes one of these, that take multiple fuel sources. Uh, with that panel in the center there, it'll of course take the Esbit cubes and a small alcohol stove. And if you pop that panel out, it'll take a Transgen stove. You just pop the lip into these grooves in each panel and now it's at the optimal height for the flames to reach the bottom of your pot to get the best burn time and boil time. It's off the ground so you don't lose heat from conduction on your stove and of course it blocks the wind. This can also be used as a firebox if you set it in and around the coals in your campfire and just set your pot right on top. When you're done, the best thing I love about this particular style of pot stand is you just pull the panels apart and it packs away nice and flat in your bag. Okay, this little pocket stove right here that I've been using as my example um, holds about four tablets if you take them out of the package and uh, of course a lighter. Um, there are vents on the bottom of the pocket stove to help it breathe and feed that fire and when you open it up it has two settings for a small pot or for a bigger pot or frying pan and of course it does block the wind a little on either side now when you're done you just simply fold it up stick it in your pocket and you're good to go Here's a quick burn test to show you uh, just how these work. You're definitely going to want to use a lighter. These do take a little bit of work to get them started, so you're going to have to hold your lighter on that cube for a bit before you get a good flame, and you'll notice when it actually starts burning up.
There you go. Now when it started up, I started to see the flame rise a little bit higher than what my lighter was showing as it was burning my finger. And I did hear it start to actually sizzle a little as well. We'll wait to let that get going so you can see how high and how big the flame is on these. And as you can see, you get a really good flame, especially if you sit it upright versus down flat. When you're done, you can just simply blow it out, let it cool off, and if it hasn't burned down to nothing, which is what it does, then you can go ahead and put them back in the container and store them for later use. The pros and cons. The pros are easy. They're small, lightweight, and they can't spill in your pack. Uh, they're also very affordable. The cons. I really want to like these, but they take a while to get them lit. Uh, they also sometimes take as much as 12 plus minutes to boil two cups of water, and that's being optimistic. They have a bad, uh, fishy odor to them before you burn them, and you're not really going to cook any big meals with these options. Unfortunately, there is one more con to using this type of fuel. Um, when it burns down, it does start to deposit a residue on the bottom of your stove, and when it burns all the way down, you'll have a brown goop residue on your stove, and on the bottom of your pot. Would I recommend these solid fuel tabs to my fellow backpackers? Of course! You know, they're lightweight, packable. Uh, this is something that I would bring on a day hike or overnight ultralight trip to cut weight and space in my pack. Uh, it's great for heating one cup of water for coffee or tea or hot chocolate and for heating up soup. Now on to the alcohol stoves. It's my personal favorite. From the DIY penny stoves and the open top stoves to the Trangia alcohol stove and the clones uh, Solo and Esbit make to model after it. Uh, these stoves will take a wide variety of fuel sources from denatured alcohol and grain alcohol like whiskey to methyl fuels like this heat gas line antifreeze and our least favorite option uh, rubbing alcohol. Now with all of these stoves, you'll want to make sure you use a windscreen so that your flame doesn't blow out. And this is just flashing that I bought at a hardware store and drilled some holes in to let some air in through the bottom to fuel the stove. With these penny stoves, you want to make sure that you prop up your pot using a little bit of hardware cloth and that will put the flame at the optimal height from the jets to the bottom of the pot which will be uh, an inch and a half to two inches to get the best boil time for your food. With these open top stoves uh, you can just simply set the pot directly on top and it pressurizes the stove, no need for a pot stand. The best fuels to use with these types of stoves is going to be denatured alcohol or heat in the yellow bottle. They'll burn hot and clean. Uh, the least favorite is going to be this rubbing alcohol uh, because it's not very efficient. Uh, it takes a little longer to boil and it leaves uh, black soot on your pot and your windscreen. Out of all the options, the heat is going to be the least expensive and can be purchased at a gas station or any big name store like Walmart. Just as a side note guys, this Trangia stove is supposedly very efficient with its fuel and can boil two cups of water three times with two ounces of fuel. And that fuel can be stored directly into the stove and sealed up tight with this lid that has a rubber gasket on the inside. It also comes with this simmer ring here that allows you to lower the heat so you don't burn your food and to snuff out your flame when you're done. So here's a quick burn test to show you how it works. Okay, so we'll be using heat as our fuel because it is the most efficient one. And I just put a little in there because I did already have some fuel in there. Having a little bit more makes it easier to light and you just light it from the top. There you go, it's as easy as that. These are so efficient 
uh, the Trangia stoves that this is going to start blooming right away. I don't know if you can hear it popping, sizzling there, but it's already bloomed. And for this test, we'll just use some hardware cloth as a pot stand. And this glacier cup as our pot. And of course, you always want to use a windscreen. But when you're done, it's very easy to put this out. Blowing on it ain't gonna do it. So you know this is gonna be a really good stove for you in high winds if you don't have a good windscreen. With this simmering, you're just gonna go ahead and close it up all the way and plop it on top. Just like that. Now when it cools off enough, you'll take that simmering off. If you go ahead and screw that back on, stick it in your pocket, you're good to go. Now how these stoves work is by burning the fumes that come off the liquid fuel, not the liquid itself. So obviously they'll work better in warmer weather and they'll need a bit, little bit of help in cold weather. I just set them on a primer plate, fill the stove with fuel, put a little bit of fuel on the primer plate here, set the pot stand on, set the pot on, or in the case of an open top stove, set it on the primer plate and set your pot directly on top of the stove. And then I light the primer plate and set the windscreen on. Now the primer plate will burn and boil the fuel inside your stove, which will then vaporize and come out the jets. It'll be lit by the flames coming off the primer plate. Using this method will get your stove started in just a couple seconds. On average I can boil two cups of water um, in about six minutes on an alcohol stove. The pros and cons to the alcohol stoves. Uh, the pros are easy. These stoves can easily be made at home for cheap or purchased online like this Tranjo that I got for $13 on Amazon or these roll top stoves here that I got from John at Intense Angler on his website, right there. The fuel can be purchased at any gas station or Walmart for a very low cost. Uh, they have a decent boil time at six minutes for two cups of water. Uh, they're of course lightweight and very packable. There's no moving parts in these and no worries uh, about maintenance or anything like that. And this Trangia stove can be used to cook either for yourself or for multiple people. The cons. You do have to carry more liquid fuel with you than you would if you used a canister stove uh, like this one here. Um, if you're going to be going on a multi-day trip and they don't tend to like working too well below freezing temperatures. Um, they can spill in your pack and contaminate food and gear and the heat, since it has methyl in it, is actually very toxic. Would I recommend these alcohol stoves to my fellow backpackers? Of course! You got fast boil time, fuel can be found anywhere, and they're very cheap and easy to make or buy, and they work great for a day hike, overnighter, or even a multi-day backpacking trip, solo, or with a couple friends. The Sterno or Gel Fuels. You can get Sterno or uh, any number of different companies make these. Uh, these stoves are my least favorite, but they're still a great stove. Uh, I'm not going to open it up for this video, mm -hmm. but the gel inside can be lit very easy and uh, it can be placed in a grill enclosure like this one that Sterno makes. Uh, it'll block the wind and give you a pot stand or a grill surface you can set the food directly onto. Uh, this can also be used as a firebox just by placing small sticks in here, lighting it, and closing the door. When you're done, just put the lid back on your stove and fold up the stand. Just like that. 
Now these are better suited for car camping because of their size and weight, but that can easily be remedied by using some hardware cloth as a pot stand because it does fit really well inside this rim here and some tin foil as a windscreen. And of course you will want to cut this down to uh, about halfway so that you have the optimal height from the flame to your pot. When you're done you can just simply pop the cap back on, wrap your pot stand around the stove, fold up your windscreen or wrap it around here and they all fit nicely inside your glacier mug. The pros and cons of using gel fuels. Even though I don't really like this option a whole lot, there are a lot of pros to it. Um, these cans can be purchased at a dollar store or at Sam's Club, and Walmart, and very, uh, various other stores for very cheap and in bulk. Uh, they actually burn for quite a while. This one here says right on the can that it burns for two plus hours. Uh, they do nest very easily inside a small cook pot like I showed before. And uh, you're not going to spill these since it is gel and it's sealed up pretty tight. Uh, you'll be able to cook a lot of food, so whether you're by yourself going solo or with a couple friends, you don't have to worry about running out of fuel. And of course, if you buy this separately, this grill from Sterno, you'll have uh, an alternative fuel source as well because you can load firewood up in this and use it as a firebox. I don't really have any cons for this, really. Uh, it was a little uh, difficult to light in cold weather, and it's a little heavy, but other than that, I'd really recommend this for... Uh, my fellow backpackers. Canister stoves. Now when it comes to canister stoves there are too many options available to show in this video. So I'm just going to talk about this six dollar canister stove that I got from Amazon and two types of fuel. Uh, canister stoves are favored for multi-day trips because the canisters can actually hold quite a bit of fuel and the stoves themselves are very efficient at using that fuel. You can usually boil two cups of water in about a minute and there's no way you're going to accidentally spill your fuel. Um, these stoves are very good at simmering, uh, just like that Trangia, but in the case of an alcohol stove, the Trangia and the clones from Solo and Esbit are pretty much the only alcohol stoves that can actually simmer. This can go from just a little flame to full blast depending on how you want to cook. And these stoves can be pretty small. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, just like the canisters, you can get different sizes. Uh, for me, I wanted to go with the smallest one possible so I could fit it in my glacier cup along with the stove. Today I'll be showing two types of fuel canisters, the Jetboil Isobutane Propane Fuel Mix and the Gas One Butane. Fuel mixes like the isobutane propane work great in just about any temperature from a nice summer day to well below freezing and sub-zero temperatures. Although in sub-zero temperatures you might want to slide this into your pocket and warm it up a little bit before you use it. But this Gas One butane can doesn't really like to work below 30 degrees Fahrenheit and you have to use an adapter like this one uh, to make it compatible with your ultralight canister stoves. So why would you want to use this? Well, because it costs just a fraction of what a uh, regular canister would cost. Uh, sometimes just as little as one dollar for an eight ounce can. So if mainly you backpack in the spring and summer months, you can save yourself some money and get a little adapter like this off of Amazon for about eight bucks. You can also find them that have a tube that runs from the uh, stand to the can and get some of these cans for uh, just a couple bucks. Now real quick I'll show a burn test of the isobutane propane mix and then the gas one butane with the adapter. It's very simple, uh, just like the MSR Pocket Rocket or any other stove. You do want to make sure before you screw it on 
that you do have the valve closed so that you're not losing precious fuel. Uh, this one has a built-in piezoelectric ignition. Just creates a little spark right there to ignite it. And there you go. Now you can boil really quick or you can simmer. Uh, during the winter you might want to have a little bit more flame. During the summer a little less so you're conserving fuel. And if you're going to be doing something like uh, dry baking bread or cooking something that you don't want to burn like your eggs, it's nice that you can control the size of the flame and the heat output on there. Now for these Gas 1 canisters, um, they actually make several different types of stoves where you would use this as a canister, you plug in there, turn it, and you've got an actual grill. Um, what I have found is you can also get several adapters, either with a long tube that runs from the canister sitting on the side going to a stand that your stove is sitting on, or something a little bit more simple like this little fold-out uh, adapter that does two things. It will hold your stove and then it'll hold your canister. Now you gotta be careful when you put this on because you don't want to lose precious fuel and when we take it off I'll show you the same thing. So on the Gas 1 canister you have this rim and this notch and then you have this nozzle that's going to be pressed in up against an o-ring, a little tiny microscopic uh, little rubber o-ring in here and that will hopefully create a nice seal and shoot the gas into the stove. Now we've got for this notch we've got this nice little flap of metal that will insert in and then this flap right here goes underneath this rim to secure it in place. And there we go. If you do it right, you shouldn't hear any loss of fuel. And it's nice that this will prop up. It's completely self-contained. You don't have a cable running anywhere. And again, I do have a uh, piezoelectric ignition on this, but I'm going to go ahead and use the lighter just to show you guys. There we go. Now you'll notice the flame is a little bit different on the butane mixture. Uh, just because it's butane, uh, I've noticed it kind of sputters a little. But still burns really well, still cooks really well. And to take that off, you're going to turn it uh, counterclockwise and pop it off quick. Now I just splattered myself with fuel as this was coming out of this o-ring. That's one uh, another drawback of using this stuff. You do waste a little bit of fuel and I'm not really too happy about being sprayed with the fuel. But considering how small and compact this is and how cheap these canisters are, um, for spring and summer this is a pretty good option for you guys. The pros and cons of using a canister stove. These canisters will actually last a long time depending on what you're cooking and the outside temperature. Uh, one canister can last you a week or so uh, for a multi-day trip and they come in a lot of different sizes. Uh, this just happens to be the smallest one I could find to fit inside my glacier cup. You can boil two cups of water in as little as a minute and you can simmer or go full blast depending on how you want to cook. They work just as well in the deep freeze of winter as they do in the warmer months. The cons. Some of these stoves and their fuels can get pretty pricey. There's a lot that can go wrong with them with all the moving parts. Some will require maintenance and replacing uh, things like gaskets and valves and that sort of thing. Uh, there is a slight possibility of them blowing up as well, although that is very, very unlikely. It's a little more difficult to find these stoves and the fuel canisters in stores. I believe Walmart carries an 8 ounce fuel canister for about 4 bucks from Coleman. And uh, to get these stoves and uh, different size of 
fuel canisters, you're going to want to go to a sporting goods store or to Amazon.com where you're going to find a little bit better selection. What I recommend canister stoves? These stoves are like sports cars. They can be expensive, fast, and a specialty item for most stores, but well worth the money. A lot of alcohol stove fans who have tried these stoves love them so much, they never look back and now they exclusively use these canister stoves. So which stoves and fuels do I use? Well, I am still partial to the alcohol stove, especially since I bought this Trangia here. Um, I love the fact that there's a simmer ring so I can lower my heat. It's very efficient at the fuel that it uses and it will hold up to two ounces of the fuel inside, which is perfect for an overnight backpacking trip. I do love the canister stoves as well. Uh, they have a quick cook time and they're great for cold weather. What I will probably do is use this for warm weather months and the canister stove for the colder months. The jury is actually still out on uh, these solid fuel tabs. I'm quickly warming up to the Sterno gel fuel as well. Uh, mostly I use it for car camping, but I'm considering using it for backpacking trips since it does have that two hour cook time and it nests just right inside a small cup. Well guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I know I left a lot out. There are a lot of options out there for us for uh, compact, lightweight, efficient backpacking stoves. A lot of different stoves, fuel, and information out there. I just wanted to show you some of the things that I've purchased, that I've tried out, and what I prefer. If you have any questions, let me know. And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you guys next time on the trail. K-Dog Crazy! K-Dog indoors, he actually is making those. You know, last week he said he accidentally made that up, but he liked the idea so much that he's going to go ahead and do one every week if he can. So every week, keep an eye out on K-Dog Crazy's channel for the K-Dog Indoors series, where he's going to show you a gear review, a tip or trick, until the weather clears up out there, and then we'll do some K-Dog Outdoors. Next week, we're going to cover how to inflate your air mattress using this Thermarest air tap pump, or just a garbage bag and a rubber band. So keep an eye out. And we'll see you on the next episode of K-Dog Indoors. Because he's crazy. I bet you guys are so glad you waited till the end of the video. Because you would have missed that. What is wrong with this guy? Really, you got to wonder. You're watching him. <laughs>